Hey, real quick, before we get started, Content Matters with a Z is our content marketing company that helps entrepreneurs tell their own stories to those who care. And here's the thing. We think every entrepreneur that is willing should have their own content platform. And we want to help make that happen, both by working directly with entrepreneurs and by sharing our own stories, exploring the craft of content marketing. Content Matters, one piece of content at a time. Learn more at kazcontent.com. Welcome to the podcast, Entrepreneur Perspectives, building and protecting your business one podcast at a time, a Kaz Source production. As entrepreneurs, we're all dealing with something, either directly or indirectly. It may be business related, it may be something happening today, or it may have something to do with health. And my family, my wife and two daughters have all been diagnosed with celiac disease. As we've attempted to learn more about celiac, we've come across some amazing people. That's why I am creating the Celiac Series, These people are taking Celiac head on and they are building something special at the same time. They are entrepreneurs, they are creators, and they are courageous. Whether you have Celiac, know someone that has Celiac, or want to learn more about Celiac, I hope this series can provide insights and thoughts for you to explore more. While this is absolutely for the Celiac community and for Celiac awareness, it's also for people dealing with something, anything. We all are. No one is alone, and as entrepreneurs, we need to find ways to keep going to have purpose, to share stories, and to connect. So we plan on featuring leaders to share their story and to then connect through those stories. It's all about content and connections. It just so happens this story and this series is about Celiac. In this Celiac Series podcast episode, we feature the founder of Celiac Cruise, Maureen Basie. Maureen and I connected through the amazing organization Celiac Disease Foundation, also known as CDF. You can learn more about CDF at celiac.org. Maureen is a self-described passionate mama who got fed up with the challenges that came up with celiac disease and travel. So she created a celiac cruise. Maureen wanted to give a truly worry-free vacation experience and she did just that with celiac cruise. Most importantly, they create a community of togetherness for their guests. Celiac Cruise offers sailings around the world in partnership with Royal Caribbean and AMA Waterways and is endorsed by CDF and the organization of Dr. Shar. Maureen's story starts with her son Peter being diagnosed with celiac disease, but the story does not end there. And with that, we welcome our featured guest for this episode, Maureen Basie. It's this social piece. I mean, that's half the reason, like, it's funny. Like, I feel like I'm at the safety, obviously, is critical. That is, I guess, if we have to rank importance. But to me, the social element of it, the child went first and then my husband. And so watching the two of them and their different ways of kind of coping with the diagnosis, Peter was four or three and a half. So like, it didn't really matter to him. He didn't really care. But as he gets older, like before I jumped online here, I'm writing. So his first communion is in May and there is a safe option. It's under 20 parts per million, but I'm talking about presentation. I'm talking about the hands and they're like, well, we use Purell. And I'm like, that doesn't kill gluten. So like, how can we Yes, the safety, but I also don't want them being like, Peter Basie, come on up to get your gluten-free host. Like, so it's just in the birthday parties and the class parties. So it was like a little bit of a COVID break from all of that. And now, obviously now they're not doing food in the classroom, Right. which I kind of hope they stick to that. It has an impact. So what's interesting is that you had mentioned, so my wife was actually first. So my daughters don't get diagnosed if it's not for my wife. My wife, it took her seven years, which is apparently the average to be diagnosed. And she wasn't just not dealing with it. She was dealing with it. And she was dealing with it like only she could know how she felt. Only she could know what she was going through. Only she knew the questions to ask her what was going Like I'm lost in it. Like you look good, you look great. You know, It's like you, she couldn't even if she wanted to describe how she was feeling and was talking to known doctors and people and people are like brushing it off and that's not it and it's something else and let's go down this different path seven years until she finally is diagnosed and it has something to go with at this point but all of us aren't we don't have celiac and there doesn't seem to be like there is an issue and going on and so we still have gluten in the house so she's still dealing with it and she's doing her own thing and she didn't we were just talking about it like the girls were asking her what did you do with toast and like what'd you use a toaster oven she's like i just really didn't and then continue fast forward and i was just telling you before my daughter my youngest chloe wasn't feeling well and she'd gotten sick like three times in a row and it just wasn't adding up and my wife looked at me we're in the bed right before she was going to bed and she looked at her legs and had a little bit of a rash and she said i think this is celiac i want to get her tested 
And meanwhile, she had been to the doctor multiple times during all this. And there wasn't even a thought at that point. She went in there. It was clear cut. She had an endoscopy like set, done, like open shot case. Like it was that. And it was been such, and my wife was just talking about, it's been such a remarkable difference for her now that she's off of it. And then she had my other kids tested. My oldest was, I had already already been tested once before. And my middle child, my daughter, other daughter, she was asymptomatic and she got diagnosed. And so that's different because what do you mean I can't have gluten? What do you mean I can't have my mac and cheese? And like, I'm fine. I don't feel anything. And that's a totally different journey to go down and dealing with all of that. So we don't have gluten in the house. And it's been interesting because the family, like my wife and two daughters, they feel better as a result. My wife notices a difference. And going to restaurants and doing all of these things of just ordering ice cream or like we were just out this weekend and two times we had a waiter who was very helpful with the entire process. But that's not typical. It's just not typical at all. And so I understand. And so then I hear about you from Celiac Disease Foundation and then you're having this travel such a big deal. And here you are with the cruise ship and it's dedicated, gluten-free, like all the way, right? And you're like, wow. And you say it, I think it's on your website, passionate mama, or you said it, passionate mama who got fed up with challenges that came with celiac disease and travel. And I'm like, well, I can't wait to talk to Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's like in a nutshell, honestly, that's kind of how, I mean, we all can identify the things that feel so drastically different mm-hmm. before and after. And to me, like travel was the big thing that stood out. Like you would spend all this money You would get there because you were told that it's safe and it's going to be okay. But at the time, one of my five, before more went down, the celiac, is sitting there waiting himself when everybody else has their food in front of them. And Mm -hmm. it was that stigma to me. And I really, really have this additional passion to just make people feel normal, especially in, I mean, what is vacation about? Like, it's about unplugging and not thinking and leaving all your stress and your worries behind most of them. But that wasn't the case. We have bags and suitcases of just-in-case food and all the things. And then having the overconfident server that you're like, Wait, you didn't ask enough questions. You knew too much, which is always like the big red flag. And then you hope that it goes well. And sometimes it doesn't. And then that vacation that you spent all that money on, you're not leaving your room. So I just felt like there had to be an easier way. Cruises is something that I grew up in Florida. It was something that was a big part of my childhood because it was just so convenient and accessible. But there's some uniqueness to it that really makes this concept doable in that their kitchens, the galleys, they call them, are stainless steel, like top to bottom. So you think about cleaning protocols and turning a ship around in a matter of and the inspections they go through. And I always tell this joke that apparently that's where they do any kind of major medical procedure because it's the cleanest place on the ship temperatures that we can't even, you know, to be able to really, really ensure that that place is clean. Yeah. Was there a point when you're on vacations and you're doing this and it's not always like, oh, I have the aha moment. Maybe it was like over multiple times, like I'm getting sick and tired of this. But was there a moment that you felt like I have to do something about it? Because you have a lot going on with your family, with your professional life, with just life in general to say, I'm going to go do this. Like, I'm fascinated by like, when did that happen? Well, I'm not going to talk about brands, but let's just say for a big birthday, we went on a family cruise Mm -hmm. and spent a ton of money. And it's a cruise that we all felt safe about and no one got sick. But it was, I think, dinner three when we had pre-ordered everything. Went through the menu the night before, checked everything off, and Peter never got dessert. And he was, for the first time, extremely emotional about why he was different. And again, as a mom, like it just passionately infuriated me, maybe, if I want to say it the right way. When we know the food is there, we know it's been prepared, the conversations have been had, we've probably spent two hours talking about this now. It was that point that I was just like, what if? So I knew an amazing woman named Connie Saunders. 
she owns a travel agency, Total Travel and Events. And I know that she had done some philanthropic, like really powerful, amazing things like breast cancer cruises and like groups of people coming together, needing community. And I touched base with her and I said, what do you think? And she said, let's do it. And we had some conversations with a few different cruise lines and really felt that comfort in what I referenced earlier about knowing and understanding, but not knowing everything. The interest in wanting to learn more and be educated. And I found the woman, ironically, I talk about her all the time. She's a pretty special woman who works at Royal Caribbean. We had our first call and again, Mama Bear goes on and on about cross contact and the importance of it. And although it might sound crazy and a little bit intense, this is why. And she let me talk. And then she stopped and she said, Maureen, I'm going to think I'm going to make your day. You're going to be able to relax a little bit. I too have celiac. And there may or may not have been tears in my eyes at that moment because I felt like, holy cow, somebody who gets it. And I really am very thankful for her because I think there's passion in our mission from internally as well. So I just think someone who's lived it, who understands it, who's on cruise ships all the time. I mean, Royal Caribbean does do a great job, I will say, with just like the things we're talking about. And the cruise I was referencing was not with them, but it was pretty neat. Yeah. The serendipity in that, the serendipity of having that conversation that you could never have expected it to have like, it really does take one to know one because I'll never understand what it's like to have it. I know what it's like to have family members now. And I had to go through my own learning process. And you talk about education a lot to think through what does this all even mean? What role can I even play in this? What can I do? I, I don't feel how you feel on a daily basis. Just like you're having to live through your son who's going through these emotional moments and you can feel it as a mom and your husband can feel it. And what do we do with this? Because it's invisible. And it's invisible not only in how they feel a lot of times, but in the food that comes out, like you don't even see it. Sometimes the croutons are on the salad and you do see it and that can piss you off, right? <laughs> but, but most of the times it's invisible. So it's like, what do we make of this? And then you have this conversation with someone who's like, you're hitting me right now as much as perhaps I'm about to hit you with this. And she says that and off you go. I mean, you also have this stack of things. You're studying for your healthcare master's degree, right? During all of this. So my background, I'm a speech pathologist by trade. So I had a private practice. I worked in hospitals as well, doing a lot of feeding and swallowing. That was always my thing. And I did step away for a little bit with all of these kids, all very close together. And I thought I was going back to it. I mean, I've always had just kind of the research passion. I loved working in healthcare and interacting with physicians. So I swear, like when the celiac stuff all kind of happened, again, here I am talking about the GI tract all the time and I'm asking questions and people are like, wait, what? Like, why do you know this? Like, why are you? And so I explained my background a little bit and I had every intention of going back, to be honest with you. I mean, that was kind of the plan when the kids were all in school. I was going to go back and back to my hospital job and the world had other plans for me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's like, what do you even make of that? Because businesses, they're all founded on like, there was this obvious need for your family. It seems like it was almost as simple as that. And then it's like, well, there's these other families out there and there's someone who's actually at Royal Caribbean that's got perhaps these needs as well. And it's like, well, other people can participate in this. And in the, of that, for that five days or a week or whatever that is, it is a community. And then there's relationships I'm sure are formed because everyone has these stories that know someone that has celiac. And next thing you know, it's like you founded this and you have this thing that people are so excited about and want to participate in and, and are learning about still today, learning about the possibility of going on a cruise like this that is for people with celiac, that is gluten-free, right? And just the education in and around celiac disease altogether. And you're out here on a podcast like this, just sharing your story and talking about it. It's it has to have a passion behind it. And so then you had mentioned your husband. So when Peter gets diagnosed, is that when you went to, and you had other people in the family, I guess, right? You have five people total in your family that have been diagnosed with celiac disease. Yeah. So essentially, as 
typical protocol, the whole immediate family is tested. I ironically have the gene. I have not gotten back to a point that I can have gluten. So we are just kind of rolling with it, but we don't have gluten in the house either. So he was tested. My husband's TTG was through the roof. We went and saw a GI doctor that was recommended to us. So he had the endoscopy, came out, got the results later, and we were convinced. I mean, because it kind of started to put the pieces together. I won't share all of his medical stuff, but again, somewhat asymptomatic, but some other correlating things that you can always kind of put together. So the doctor calls and said, good news, you don't have it. You're good. And at this point, I am nose deep in everything. And I'm like, oh boy. (laughs) So he's like, yay, I'm good. And then symptoms really start to kind of present themselves. And with a TTG that high, generally speaking, the recommendation is come back. There was no comeback recommendation. It was, you're good, you're done. And I think a community support and, you know, kind of surrounding ourselves with so many people with celiac, I think he started to hear from other people other than his amazing, wonderful wife (laughs) who was pushing like, honey, maybe we should look at this again because the lifestyle change, as we know, was significant. I mean, God love my husband. You know, he's a big football fan. He's a baseball. He loves all the things that go with gluten and sports. And I think the thought of what that meant. So eventually our medical team here was like, maybe you should see this doctor. And we went, TTG was still through the roof, follow-up scope. And she really explained to me how there's certain areas that need to be scoped. You can't just take any sample. There's specific like angles in the small intestine and such. So she did a lot of biopsies and came back and he was scale four. Like it was this high, no villi whatsoever. So wow. there we are. That, I'm trying to think like, that's an interesting story to like, to go through and have this test that establishes it all, right? That says it all. And it came back negative and you're good to go until you weren't because you kind of like, I don't know, I have that eye and I have that thought that it's not it. And so how long was that like, a year or two, like within that year or two after Peter? It was about two and a half years. Okay. So you're still going in. Because I heard you're on the Celiac Project podcast a few times. And so that was one of the first podcasts I came across when I'm like, okay, I'm not understanding this. I need to find... And then just randomly came across it actually on Spotify. And I listened to it. And I think I had to go on a road trip. And I probably listened to like 17 episodes. I'm like oh, wow, this is incredible to come across them. And Michael Frolicstein is talking about it and how he was considered just a boy with a nervous stomach. Mm -hmm. And like all along, did your husband look back and say, wow, this explains so much or was it totally? Okay, It just wasn't always the classic GI stuff. When I think that to us, even with Peter, Peter was constipated, but he didn't have the other elements. And then also his immune system was non-existent, which is why he was so sick for so long. But no, I mean, I think that it was funny. I mean, we make jokes. We had three kids and I'm cooking all this healthy food and trying to get back to pre-mama shape. And my husband is losing so much weight, so much weight. And I'm just staying steady as we go. And we blamed it on the kids, like the stress, the anxiety, the lifestyle of all of a sudden three kids, four and under, you know, I think that there's a lot of things as a parent, you can kind of put a bandaid on it and be like, oh, that's why. Well, that's why. And I think that looking back, a lot of dentition stuff, just a lot of things, headaches, we thought was allergies, maybe not allergies, you know, but that's the thing. It has so many different faces. It's very... I've heard like 300 symptoms and that's just what they talk about. And it's amazing to me that it's not tested more seeing it. And then hearing the number, and I don't know exactly what it is today, but I know CDF puts this out of like 80% undiagnosed or somewhere in that, whatever that number is. That's just insane. Because you think about, like we talked about earlier, if you go to a birthday party and cupcakes are served and there's 10 kids there, there's a chance if there's one kid who has it, there's probably another kid. There's probably multiple kids that may or have it or may develop it over time in some way. They have the gene for it and it doesn't present itself. And to think that there's all these people out there and they have no idea. And it's not necessarily their fault. They would have no reason to think that it was. And it's not being talked about. And it's not something that you can throw 
a prescription app, right? And that's a frustrating thing. But but here's the thing is like, there are things we can do in what you're doing to help out. Like we think of, my wife and I talk about this a lot, is like the accountability at a restaurant. When do, in some places are better than others, right? And we don't live in a city that, is there yet. There are some restaurants here that are doing a great job and some are doing better, but it's very hit or miss. And it could depend on the day you go, the time of day you go, just what conversation you have with the server. And that complicates things. And it's frustrating. And I've seen it in all of their eyes. And I've seen it. I've even felt it on my side because they would like question your order, be like, well, that won't taste good. I'm not asking you how it's going to taste. Like, And as someone who's like just trying to have a meal for your family because food's very important. It's very important to us. It always has been. It has been amazing too to watch it to say all the different options that do exist now. And there are people. So I'm not, I want to just focus on the negative because I think there's a lot of positive that's out there too. But it is very frustrating to go through that experience because the reality is we're not typically going to be on a cruise ship. If we could live on a cruise ship or live on vacation, that would be great. But on the daily, we have to deal with it, either eating in and not being able to go out, which is frustrating because we all have our favorite restaurants that we want to go to, or I crave this, or I want to do that. Or maybe it's a birthday or a special celebration. But that is a frustrating experience in our lives, in a lot of people's lives. But going back, it's like a lot of people don't even know. And they wouldn't know because my wife has it, my youngest has it. And then they went to get my middle child, my daughter tested. They had to go through this whole process again to even get tested for it. And it was like, hold on, mom has it. Her sister has it. Take the test. What are we waiting for? Like they should have called us up and said, we're going to do this. It's just, just be a part of it. I am venting a little bit in it because I'm preaching to the choir, right? (laughs) Yeah, no, I mean, I do think like that is, I mean, Peter was tested for diabetes. We were actively testing for problems because he was yellow. He had the allergic shiners. And ironically, it was the pulmonologist who took one look at him and was like, Eh, something doesn't look right. And yeah. that's who was our answers. It doesn't always, but I do think a lot of these medical, celiac specific medical teams are trying to really increase this awareness with GPs and pediatricians and things like that. So I think hopefully I'm very active in even my school. Like I had the same conversation with the first communion planning. And I'm like, listen, I promise you it's K through eight. We are the first, but there are many to come and they're probably, we have them now. And so we need to figure out a protocol for not just safety, but to also ensure the child feels normal, (laughs) you know? So I feel like I just continue to find little places where I need to like... One little difference. I think even seeing the word written, what is that? Like getting someone to ask that question. What does that mean? What is that all about? I know someone who has it. That's interesting. Oh, wait a second. And then it just builds up over time. It's weird. It's, I just think of this. It's like almost like branding. Like if you see the name and you hear about the name and you see it, it's like all of a sudden it's like, I want to learn more about it. Or then you see a documentary on it, like the Celiac Project documentary, or you hear a podcast or friends talking about it at dinner. The eighth time it like kind of hits you. And then it was like, even you just people that in our family that when they found out that the kids had it, it was like, that's eye-opening. That changes some things a little bit. It might have should have been eye-opening before, but it just because it didn't hit them yet. And then it hits you. And then it's like, wow, there's a lot to talk about with it. And that's why, you know, again, it's so weird because we just, my son had a soccer tournament. So we were out of town for a few days. So we were on, it wasn't like vacation, but it was vacation. So it was. And it was just a few days and we had to deal with it. And so understanding and having the opportunity to talk with you, Celiac Cruz, here we are. And it's like, could you imagine going somewhere where there's no questions? It's just all gluten-free. It's safe for people with celiac. That's amazing. And so then you have COVID come. It's like, no one's going anywhere. (laughs) Why? Yeah. The timing of all that was a little bit interesting, but we've all been impacted. Everybody's got an impact of it. And what I feel very thankful for looking back is that we, the first one was MLK weekend in January. So we were like right before this all went down. And I remember us getting off the ships and you were kind of seeing kind of the funny like Corona bottle. That was where it was. And (laughs) we didn't really know what it meant. And then before you know it, and of course the cruise industry was very involved in that. So yes, there was a point in time that I wasn't sure, but I was just so thankful that 
we got one under our belt and was able to connect with people and give people that opportunity. And you talk about the education and one thing that like, it was so powerful, the whole experience, watching kids become emotional because it's the first buffet they've ever had. And these 13 year olds coming over to me in tears, thanking me for just doing something that I think any other parent or spouse or child would do for someone they care about. I mean, and that's what is really amazing. It's all the same. It, I'm just like you. Like it's just something that for some reason, I also am so thankful for our community who's really pushed this and helped get the word out just from a very organic, not a business, just a mom. When I think that we go on board two weeks before and we train the entire ship. So we take a celiac specialist in the country who does this for a profession. And that first time we train 1,300 crew on that ship. And it was around the clock. We're doing trainings at one in the morning because the cruise industry, it's different. They work that much. I mean, they don't get a lot of... So whenever it works, we were there. And so if they leave this cruise line, they're taking that knowledge, like what you just talked about. Oh, celiac. So if they serve someone else who needs to be gluten-free or there's more of a knowledge and understanding of the why, so you're not getting that, here we go, you know? So it was, but even the kids club, like they took the Play-Doh out of the kids club. There was finger paint that we found. So we like looked at everything, like, and it's it just the, the dishwashers. I mean, everybody who would be involved in the program, which was the cruise director was there. Like it was just really powerful. Oh, I'd imagine that's that 13 year old or whatever age a child is that comes up to you and has tears or even just says thank you. Because when I have a waiter or waitress that serves us and takes that care and you just feel like they really do get it, you just want to keep them. You want to take them with you to the next place you go. So I could imagine that you go all out. And then like as someone who built this yourself and with other people, with amazing people to help you along this, that is more impactful than anything else that comes with being an entrepreneur, to starting something out of nothing to say, wait, this is, what do you think? What if we tried this crazy thing and then we just went down this path? And yeah, there's a lot of positives and impact to the community that you can have, but that one person, that one kid, that one family member that just says, thank you. This is like, means so much. I'm sure that's like, this is why I do what I do. Yeah. No, I mean, that's the ball game. It really is. And I couldn't have done it myself. I know that. And I always joke, it's like, I'm thankful for those people in the beginning who, for some reason, trusted me and didn't assume I was this crazy, crazy woman who was like, okay, I want to do this. And I mean, even the doctors from the beginning, we had, you know, we always bring a medical team on the ship as well for education if people want it. It's not something you're required to attend. But I called Danny Mallon from Cincinnati Children's and I was like, hi, I'm Maureen. He immediately was like, let's talk about this. I'd love to come and do present some research and just when it's just kind of evolved from there, that trust, that innate trust for some reason of just recognizing what my mission was. Yeah. So. Let me ask you this. Did you need this? Like, did you need this too for even yourself to like have something really big to focus on that's like bigger than yourself and bigger than even your family? You know, it's funny. And I'm going to, again, try and not, I get emotional. Like I'm brought to tears about this. Like Jimmy V, Jimmy V is very like, he sits here with me all the time about being so passionate about something that you're brought to tears and it happens all the time. I used to work with children with special needs. I worked with adults towards the end of their life and I was so empowered and helping people learn how to eat again. And that was awesome. And I am so thankful I had that. So I had that feeling of what something really powerful for a career <laughs> feels like. And like I said, I thought that was the journey I was taking. But I mean, this fills me just as much, if not a little more, to be honest with you. Like it just, to be able to cry <laughs> frequently about something you're doing to help my family, to help your family, to help the mom who's going to find out tomorrow that this is the answers or the yeah. adult who's 70 four years old wondering why for so long they haven't felt well. Like it kind of unites like the whole... So yeah, I'll get emotional I, again. I can so. tell. Celia Cruz has been talked about. Your name will now come up. My daughter, Aaliyah, who's... We've never gone on a cruise before, but she's like, oh my God, so I can go there and doesn't have to... Like we went to get ice cream this one time and it's a place that's got gluten-free. It's got dairy-free. They have all these things. And there was still like 
just want ice cream. I don't want all the questions that come with it. And they weren't being me. They were trying their best and they were doing every... But it, it was just, I could tell with her, she just kind of like, the ice cream wasn't as fun anymore. It lost its luster. And it's like, wow, to go to a place to then have it just be carefree and just have fun and not worry about any of that type of stuff, it makes an impact. And like, so we're talking about it. You know, we're talking that, hey, I'm going to be talking to her. And that's like so cool. And that's like, I want to know about it. And what does that look like? But into cruise ships, like we've never been on a cruise and it hasn't been our thing. But to say, wow, I get it because we're going offshore and there is no gluten that can come in and with the ocean, right? So, and then like we talk about COVID happens and a lot of the stuff on the news, at least, has presented itself of like these cruise ships coming in. So that gives a bad stigma and cruise ships have had some stigmas in the past with one person gets sick, they all get sick and it's not good stuff. And you've heard the horrible stories of people that were stuck in quarantine on a cruise ship, which sounds like one of the most miserable places you could be at that point and you can't do anything. So how do you present this to people that maybe they haven't been on a cruise before that aren't necessarily thinking cruise is the place for them and maybe that's just not for them? And also with the stigma that came with traveling during COVID and now post-COVID, hopefully, how are you thinking through all that or talking to people about that? Of course. I mean, I've been very transparent about it from the beginning that I was very impacted by all of this too and had some pause and concerns. And we've kind of been very, very cautious with COVID. So I'm not out and about doing things. So I also try and present that when I'm telling people of 2022 as let's dream a little bit has been a little bit of the messaging and trying to find a date that we feel would be a better time to do this. What's amazing to me and Total Travel, as I said, is kind of the travel partners with this. And we have so many first-time cruisers, so many. And I think that people just never really put it on their list as something they would want to do. And then all of a sudden, when I start to explain the whys, that's not to say at some point we aren't going to try and take over a resort or something. I mean, I'm empowered by the the interest and people just wanting this, that we've told people we're going to take them around the world. And when people say they want to go X, Y, and Z, we're trying to find a way to make that happen. And we're going to Europe in October of 2022 and a different concept cruise line, but it's a river cruise, but it that's entire ship's going to be gluten-free. There's not even going to be a crumb on it. So it's completely dedicated the entire thing. But just giving people all the information, because I guess I have those same emotions and I'm not working for the cruise line. I'm not here to try and sell people to do something they're not comfortable with. So I think talking to mom to mom of like, yeah, well, I understand like some of those concerns, but we will be able to give your child this experience. You know, I mean, that's the big thing. We've had so many, I hear these stories about these teenagers who still talk from meeting on the cruise ship, like, and they're all planning to go again. And we have the entire conference space for this next sailing next March. So we're going to do a lot of this programming, like having the chance, like I'm trying to find like child comedians or like just kind of a way For these kids all to be able to look around and be like, we're all the same here today and having younger kid-based activities, but then the tweens and then the older. So we're just trying to really give people more of that community support too, because it was one of the things that people really asked more for. I said this to Mike and Cam last week. I always get the pamphlet or the activity sheet when you check into a resort and it's like all these different things. And it's pretty easy to go through quickly, can't do that, can't do this one, can't do this. (laughs) And those are the things that stick out to me. And I make little notes of what has made us feel ostracized and try and incorporate that back into the program. Yeah. It's interesting because the cruise is, a lot of it's the community. It's just the experience, like you talk about giving your kid that experience. Because I was thinking as you were talking earlier of, I could imagine the relationships that are made because of the stories that are being told. And you just happen to be on a cruise ship. That's just where it's happening. So in addition, that's really cool. But it's more about even the relationships that are formed in these spaces. And I think there's something to that. And oh, by the way, it's on a cruise ship. (laughs) Yeah, it's the vessel to create these memories, I guess. It's it's a safe (laughs) vessel because of what I talked about earlier, to be able to give people these opportunities and knowing that 
the same people are going to be in charge of our menus. We have our own menus that they create. And we were assigned to the same group that we're going to have this time. And we're going to add a little bit more of this and not as much of this. And they're open to just kind of continuing what people want. I love that. The vessel to create opportunities. I mean, that's how I see a podcast often is just a conversation between two people and not overthinking it. If people listen to it, great. If they don't, we got to have this conversation. I got to have a conversation and learn more about what you're doing, what you're building, what you're all about, your family, and that those connections that you just can't take that away. You can't take it away. And it's important. I, I think it's really smart of you and courageous of you to build what you're building and to be out here talking about it and sharing it and then going out to sea and, and creating those opportunities for other people. Where do and Celiac Cruise, where do we learn about you and what you're doing and Celiac Cruise and everything else that you're sharing? Well, everything is on our website. So celiaccruise.com and then all of our social handles are Celiac Cruise. So Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. That's awesome. And so the next, I know you mentioned Europe, you have the Caribbean coming up. What are the dates for the next sailings? Yeah. So the first, the Royal Caribbean, we're on the Mariner of the Seas and that's March 31st, 2022 through April 5th. So it's a five night kind of six day because we ask people to get on kind of early that first day so we can have our welcome aboard gluten-free lunch and kind of talk about everything. So we have two days at sea, which I'm really excited about for the programming and all the things I talked about with, again, if people want them, they're there. Some people want to just go on vacation and know that they can safely eat, but it's always going to be a part of it if people are interested in that. And then we go to Cozumel too, which we're in the works of kind of planning some group excursions for us to ensure, again, there's safe options to eat off the ship. And then we also go to Coco Cay, which is Royal Caribbean's amazing private island. Again, we're in that controlled environment and we'll have options there for our group. So that's March, end of March, 2022. And then we are going to Europe, the Danube River out of Budapest. And that's October 23rd through the 30th of 2022. Okay. Well, you have a lot of planning to do and a lot of look forward to. So this is awesome. So we're going to get this one out there and share with all sorts of people and continue to create awareness and tell these stories. And Maureen, thank you so much. I mean, it's so great to talk to a passionate mama, as you call yourself, and making these changes for your family and for other people and anyone that listens. So thank you. Well, thank you. I mean, I appreciate the opportunity to do this and what you're doing. And all of this is kind of new to me. It's not like I have this like background in marketing and I just, it's sharing how I feel and who I am. And sometimes that's on social media, but also the podcast yeah. element. So it's it's been fun. And I love talking to people and especially those who have kind of shared the same journey. I wish you guys were closer, but we get down to Charlotte a decent amount. Yeah. Well, eventually these things, I think will open up again and we can gather in a nice gluten-free restaurant, right? <laughs> For sure. Yes. Yep. Thank you again, Marie. Of course. Thank you. And we'll talk to you again soon. One of my favorite things about CadSource is the opportunity to chat with amazing business leaders and entrepreneurs. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. If you want to connect, you can find me on LinkedIn or visit us at CadSource.com. Thank you for listening to this CadSource production, Entrepreneur Perspectives, building and protecting your business one podcast at a time. Content Matters with a Z is our content marketing company that helps entrepreneurs tell their own stories to those who care. And here's the thing. We think every entrepreneur that is willing should have their own content platform. And we want to help make that happen, both by working directly with entrepreneurs and by sharing our own stories, exploring the craft of content marketing. Content Matters, one piece of content at a time. Learn more at kazcontent.com.